everyone. My name is Ian Johnson. Uh, I go by Angelot online. Um, I do have the privilege of working with Sarah, although I wish you had warned me before you took screenshots of my ugly debug view things, because I'm the reason she suffers through that. Um, all right, so yeah, I want to go over blocks and also just, yeah, kind of how, now that you've been equipped with some of the starting points for, for both coding and designing in D3, how you can get involved in the, the community so you can continue learning or sharing the cool stuff you're doing with people. And to kick that off, I kind of want to just quickly go over some links of places to find a lot of examples. So first of all, and all these links are in on this page, so you know I'm going to go through them, but you'll be able to refer back to this if you need to. Um, so you know the first place is the official D3 uh, gallery of examples has a lot. We just keep scrolling and scrolling. Uh, but there's another page with more. This has 1,900 or more than 1,900 community-sourced examples. You can search them and filter them by you know, all kinds of different thing, things, topics. I think there's authors around here somewhere. You know. So definitely recommend, where's you know, Bostock? Going through here and uh, you know, checking out all the, all the stuff you can do with D3. So Mike, the creator of D3, also gave this really great talk and then wrote it up in a really nice blog post. Um, sort of, if you read through this, you hopefully come away with the understanding of why examples are so important and like how powerful they can be, both for the community, for your own learning and understanding, also for getting help from other people, and yeah, and just kind of pushing forward this ecosystem. So I want to talk about a couple of these tools. Mainly blocks is what we're going to go over, um, how to create them, and some sort of pro tips that aren't really covered in the, the literature, I guess, um, to kind of make really good use of them. I also want to plug in an open source side project that I've been working on with some friends uh, called Tributary, which is kind of a rapid prototyping environment for um, D3. So you know you get code on the right and um, SVG on the left, and you can see it all change in real time, that kind of stuff. So also there's a, a couple I list them out here. Some I call them exemplars, uh, people that make a lot of examples. Uh, Mike Bostock is definitely ahead of the power curve um, or power law, I guess, and. You know, Kai is up here too, making some sweet, sweet examples. You should check out Sarah Quigley, who's spoken, uh, given a, a cool uh, show and tell at one of our last meetups. Makes some nice blocks too. And then, I just plug myself. I'm always kind of just making little things, trying to demonstrate, so you can like play with these tributaries. They're almost all D3. And I also made a bunch of little tutorial mixtapes, which. I take a simple example and try to make a five to 10 minute video taking you through it, and I put it to the hip hop beat to kind of keep it you know, entertaining um, so it's not just you know, my voice rambling. So it, and on this page, if you click on any of these upper titles, it takes you to like the YouTube playlist, and you can watch, watch those, or you can just look at the code. Can we see one? Uh, yeah, after, afterwards. <laughs> this, is, this is a freestyle right now, live, you know? Show. You're lucky I didn't charge a mission. Uh, oh, that's Shirley's. OK. So yeah, screw it. We'll do it live. Um, so yeah, uh, Kai already gave my talk for me. But there's two main, <laughs> two main things. When something goes wrong or you have something cool, right? that's when you want to make an example. So let's start with when something goes wrong, because when you're starting out, that's probably where you're at. right? Uh, it's still where I'm at. Um, I guess it never stops. But when you can do this, you can easily get help on Stack Overflow or on a D3 mailing list. So we're going to start with a map that I prepared. I've, you know, I just copied some of Mike Bostock's code and, and commented out a line. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to look at the source. So here's some code. It's only 60 lines. Here's where I went wrong. For the sake of demonstration, I'm just telling you that. Um, but I mean, imagine this, right? I'm going to copy all this. And imagine I'm in my Gmail, and I paste this, and I email everybody and say, hey, what's wrong with this, right? 
Now you open up your phone, you're on the BART, and you're a, you know, a good Samaritan, and you check the mailing list every morning and say, maybe I can help someone out today. Because actually, that's how I learned all D3, was I would, I would just try to answer other people's questions, and, and you'd learn so much just you know, looking through people's code and fixing this one simple thing and making them happy. But you open up your email client, and you get this, but it's probably like, you know, can I do this? Like this or something, right? And you're trying to say, all right, well, you know, thanks. Uh, you know, I don't have anyone got time for that. Um, where are we at? So, really, what you want to do is take all of that and make a block out of it. How do we make a block out of it? We're going to go to gist, gist. Okay, they officially told me it's gist. I say gist, GitHub, but whatever, right? <laughs> they made it. They know. Uh, and I'm going to say, you know, help me. The key here, like the one thing you have to do, is is call this index.html. This is how Blocks knows that this is a block and not just a piece of text or whatever it is. And then we are going to create this public gist. So now I've made a, a gist, and I want to see it in Blocks. It's as simple as copying this up here, going to Blocks, and doing that. Now there are. Nothing shows up because I broke it, remember? Um, but you see here in the block that there's the thing I des described it as. Then there's this, this section here for um, rendering it. And then there's the, the code in this nicely formatted thing, right? So I have all the context I need to you know, actually see this. You know, maybe if there was a, a thing that wasn't quite as broken, but you can see, oh, like the data is just not binding or something like that, and then you look at the code. It's all there in one place, easy to format, and also easy to fork, right? It's, it's on GitHub, and I can go in here, and well, this is my own, so I'm just going to kind of cheat, but I'm going to edit it. I'm going to uncomment this, update it. And now, Blocks does cache, so all right. It's not going to work right away. Yeah, I do that. Sometimes it. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of things we can do. So I'm actually going to show you a couple of tricks. No, it's cached for that whole block. So, so trust me for a second. Um, bear with me. Yeah, if, if you can fork it and something. But some of the other things I'm going to show you um, will allow you to. To see it. So actually, why don't we skip ahead to this forking thing? So another thing, and I've complained to GitHub about this. Maybe if I can do it more publicly, um, they'll listen. But you can't fork yourself, right? Um, we all want to fork ourselves, but <laughs> it's just not possible. <laughs> Somebody though, someone smart, made a bookmarklet where you can fork your own Git. Just so I'm just going to walk you through a really quick way of doing this. You just copy all this JavaScript. And in Chrome, you add a bookmark. And I say, you know, fork yourself. And then this is a URL bar. I just paste this JavaScript in, right? What? Yeah. So now we'll go back to this thing. I'll refresh this page. Click this bookmark. Oh, there's a fork button. I'll click that. Forked it. Then go here. Come on, did I not fix it? Four of four. Oh, man. Oh. It's because it's trying to access this particular thing. Oh, man, of course I'm going to break it. Did it live. All right. So let me go back. Things are going to keep going wrong for a second. So let's look at something cool. <laughs> and then, then maybe we'll come back and it'll be right again. Because we have to wait five minutes, right? All right, so let's say I made something like this little electron thing. And I did this in, in one of my videos. And this is a really simple example of how to drag 
circle and keep it on another circle, right? And I did this because I'm a math nerd and I really appreciate trigonometry, but you might want that for some interactive thing or game or some other thing. Also, because of D3's powerful API, this is also less than 50 lines of code. And this one will, you know, will work. Hopefully, I say that now. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple more things, right? So again, index.html, I call this electron, paste this here. We can do other special things in gist. This is all sort of based on convention. So it's sort of like if you know the rules and you follow them, cool stuff happens. If you don't follow them, it doesn't work. So one convention is adding a readme. And most of you are probably familiar with Markdown and GitHub's, uh, you know, big, big proponent of that. So we can say, you know, awesome electron, click the blue, or I guess drag the blue dot. And we're going to create this gist. But let's say that's not enough because I want to see if I can get, if this works here. Well, I showed you, you know, Mike's page, right? But here's, here's mine, and it's kind of a mess. But see how some of them have these nice thumbnail images? And I was, you know, testing this before, so I swear to God it works sometimes. Um, I want to be able to do that, right? But the convention for that is adding a thumbnail PNG. So the problem is if we edit this, and we say add file, correct me if I'm wrong, but like there's no PNG insert thing here, right? It's all programming languages. So I'm gonna cancel that. The thing about gists, 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 gists are, is that they're git, git repos, not JIT repos. Um, and <laughs> you can clone them. Problem is, if you clone this URL, it's the HTTPS one. It's the the. It's not read only, but then you have to enter your password and stuff. And you know, most of the times when you're on a Git repo, it's yours. You you click the clone link. It gives you a command that looks very much like this. So I, I put this here. I found this on Stack Overflow, like most things. Um, and you just replace those X's with your gist number, which is the thing that we're using to reference our our black blocks here. So I'm going to go into my console in some folder, paste this, delete that. Can everyone see that? It's kind of like up there. Copy my number. Check it out there. You know, this is my readme and index file. If I, oh, I don't have that. You know, here's that same index HTML that we had before. But I want to give it the screenshot, so I have all kinds of stuff open right now. Take a screenshot, you know, however you like to do that with whatever program. I go to my desktop. Now, this is going to be a, a giant file, so let's adjust the size. It's not that giant, I guess. I'll make it like 200 pixels tall. Save it out. Rename it. Whoa. And I'm just going to do this in the console. Sorry. So my desktop thumbnail. You guys see this? All right, so now get status. I need to add this thumbnail down here. Doing just good stuff. I'm going to commit it with a message saying I'm adding a thumbnail. That doesn't really matter as long as you commit it. Push it. I just get push. Okay. So now let's go to my block. This should be fine, right? It just sees this. There's no, the thumbnail actually didn't have anything to do with this, where we hope to see it. Oh, come on. All this caching is messing up my. Well, that's happening. I have trouble with one of my blocks. 
Oh, yeah? yeah? Oh, man. Do you need some help? Yeah, if you reload mine, you need help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now it worked. <laughs> the G fork. No, I pushed the broken one. Uh, no, the broken it's the cache. <laughs> so cache rules everything around me. Sorry. <laughs> Get the code. Yeah, data, data. Huh? Yes, I believe you can. So it's actually on the server side on the blocks thing, because he's hosting on Heroku, and the API usage and stuff, the amount of people linking to this stuff would melt his bank account. Um, we can try the deep, deep linking thing. So this is sort of you know, more stuff where we're leveraging GitHub. There's three revisions. Um, so I believe if we just copy this whole thing, is this the broken one? No, this is the fixed one. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh, where is my broken one? Oh, look. No lie. OK. Yeah. All right. And did I fix? Did this one fix yet? No, that one. Okay. This video? Oh, no. This, this is acapella. Um, I'll go back and do this. What song do you guys want to hear? Like, when I go home and. All right. So. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's really what I wanted to cover, right? So I guess we didn't get the, the whole something went wrong and we fixed it flow, had a little bit of a, a hitch because of the caching. But I, I hope you get the idea because what will really happen is you'll put it in a block, you'll send it out to the mailing list or you'll put it on Stack Overflow, hopefully with like, you know, some context and some minimal code example, not with all, you know, your entire project there. Um, somebody will see it, fork it, fix it, and then post it back to you, and you'll understand. That'd be really cool. Or you'll put it on something. Will you know? You make something cool. You tweet it. Everyone else retweets it, and we're all happy. Um, and then Yelp hires you because they're hiring or something. Yeah. Um, all right. So with that, yeah, I'm gonna stop here so we can get to our show and tell. So thank you.